Hello everybody, so today we are going to start uh, our, we're not going to call it a spring plowing campaign because it's, it's less than 20 acres and uh, you know that don't really qualify, um, but we're going to start plowing today, it's only two fields, I've said that probably don't spread in, I think I said in the don't spread in video, we're just going to plow two fields, so in a minute we are in where the fodder beet was harvested, or the fodder beet, the 2020 fodder beet crop was in this field. Um, so you've seen us harvesting it, you've seen us dung spreading it, you've seen mold ploughing, we mold ploughed the headland. So I'm just in a minute, we're on the headland, um, we mold ploughed this on Vintage Thursday, uh, the 178 did that, so you can watch that video. Um, and since mold ploughing we have put some slurry on, um, that we didn't film. So, next job is we're going to plough it. So, normally when I, you know, I try and do a ploughing video every year. Uh, and we just kind of film as we're going up and down and it, you know it gets a bit dull doing the same thing every year but what we're going to do to this year today something a little bit different and if you can see the plough is on um, it looks rusty dirty but it's actually greasy now it's been stored every winter or for a year virtually um, all greased up to keep it shiny hopefully so what we're going to try and do today is a little bit of how we set going uh, how we start out and uh, basically just some rough settings of the plough to, just to get us going. Right, so quickly before we get going, okay, so here is the headland. You can see the mole plough strips that we put in. Uh, so that hedge down there is almost a straight line, but not quite. And then this hedge over here, okay, so we've got, a uh, that's our boundary hedge there with our neighbour. So it goes down there, comes across and then down away again uh, on the far side of that hedge on the far side of the hedge there. So the two sides of the field are not parallel. So what you're supposed to do for best practice when you're ploughing, um, every time you plough it, you start at the opposite side. So last year we started uh, that, that side, that was the straight-ish ish, straight -ish side, uh, and we ploughed across and finished here uh, with the two, you know, the two awkward bits. And so this year what we've got to do is we've got to start this side and work our way across. Otherwise, eventually you'll end up with a mound of soil this way, this side, uh, and a gutter over there because you're always turning the soil the same way so if you turn it a different way every year uh, it stays level last year was easy we struck out with a straight line down that hedge and we fiddled did the fiddly bits at the end here uh, this year not so easy we need to start uh, on the short bits uh, and hopefully we can have it parallel uh, and go and finish up on the straight edge now i know some people or i think some people that know what they're doing better than me what they would probably do is a start here uh, where there's a straight line and I think you can put put a put a question or put a comment down below if you know this better than me and what some people with, with a reversible plow um, they plow one way and then spin the plow over and plow back the other way uh, on the same ground if you like so they kind of end up cut like all the soil's got to be cut and we don't end up with a hump and I think that's what some people do. But what we're going to do today, we're going to have a go. So because this was fodder beet field, um, it was drilled starting from that side. So it's, it's straight drills and we can still see where the harvester runs. So hopefully we come over to our short side. We can follow a harvester run at both sides of this dog leg and they should match up somewhere close. Probably not showing up on the camera but you can just see the lines and here we can see the headland so i don't want to so i'm going to do it this way because this is why i've always done it i don't want to do the two runs in the middle because we don't want to build up a, a hump of soil for running over with the red you know because this is a grazing slash silage field so we don't want a hump in the middle so quickly always you know we've seen this tractor every video virtually um so we've got the dowdswell well plow It is a DP, DP7, DP7D plow. Um, if I'm reading the serial number correctly, it is 1980, built in 1980. So, uh, nearly as old, well, old, nearly as old as me, getting on that way. Um, four furrow, just, uh, you know, it's a plow. So let's go have a rough set up and uh, see if we can get our straight line. So there's a few things we need to do to the tractor before we hitched on. Obviously we did it back in the yard. Um, so for a reversible plow, we need to make sure the two lift rods, 
uh, on each side are identical length. Um, your tire pressures need to be equal and, uh, and not too high. So you want to be uh, a little bit of. So you don't want to you don't want to rock hard like you would for road work. Uh, want to be a little bit lower on pressure. Um, but it's most important to keep the two lift rods and the two tires level. Everything's got to be matching both sides. And um, because we're spinning the plow side to side, if it's if one is longer than the other or higher pressure than the other, it can put you out of balance. And, that, and you won't get level plowing. So that's all done in the yard. Do that for you, Rich on, because it's easy. Right, so the first thing when you're marking out or setting out, uh, you would, not everybody does this. Um, it's one of the things you can do. Um, you set out your headland scratch so that you know where you're plowing to, because if you've got an angle like this and you put a, just a scratch fire down, uh, it gives you something to plow to, and then your headland stays parallel. Uh, a lot of people would do it on the end, the end rows, you know, the ends of the rows, the headland, as you're driving up. I don't tend to do that because I just drive to the hedge. Um, you don't want to be bouncing over too much of a furrow all day, so I don't tend to do that one. I just do the hedges so that you can uh, keep your keep your headland fairly square. Just keep. I tend to run that side light up the up the hedge line, um, and then you can, you know, that kind of gives you enough room and keep it parallel to the hedge. Just you don't even need to scratch just to mark it. Okay, so we're just marking with a back furrow as you've just seen um, and to keep that so it's just a back furrow in to work the top link is long too long to walk too long for working but it's you know and then just pull up to the hedge lift the plow out and because we've got the kink in the hedge we're going to drive around and mark out the next side while we're on Okay, so here we are back to the next run now. So we are got our side light again. You probably can't see it on the camera, but lined up the side light with the bottom of the hedge. Drop the plow in. And just leave a gentle scratch with the back furrow just to mark where we're running. Okay, so up ahead you can see that's our scratch we've just put in. So what we'll do now, flip the plow over, um, shorten our top link to somewhere where I can have a, you know, I know somewhere handy where it's gotta go. Um, so we'll shorten it to that, and then just, basically we've just gotta fiddle till it's right. Right, so we've had a, so we found our line. Plow's turned over. Make a start. So when we're on little short bits like this into a triangle, uh, I don't ever bother turning the plow. 
just back up for a little while. It's, it's much quicker to do this. So I'm going to do a few runs just to get the top link set. And I'll get our depth right. Okay, so we've got lots of big fat worms in this soil. Um, good sign, you won't, always want plenty of worm activity. Um, there's loads of them here, look. Another one here, little tiny one. So when the plough's set right, you want it to be level, front to back. Um, you can see all the furrows are taking the same amount of soil. Uh, and standing behind, they want to be vertical which is again that's why it's important to have your lift rods on the tractor right um, equal so that we remain vertical in the plow we're burying burying all the trash bit of a couple of fodder beets still there but we can't do much about that um, it's a bit of a wet sticky corner here but once we get out of this we should be going better so i'm happy that's set good enough for now um, soil types do change so you've got to keep an eye on it um, but I think what I'll do now is just get going and um, see how we get on Right, so actually now we are into the next day. So we started plowing Friday. We did the two little short, short work bits Friday. Um, then it came to milking time because we didn't get going very early. So we're now back into Saturday doing the, uh, the main bit. I'm probably not gonna, well, I'm certainly not gonna get this field finished today. Um, and not in this video because I need to get it edited and uploaded ready for Sunday. So we're cutting it a little bit fine with the old videos at the minute, but never mind. Um, you might see behind, there's loads of seagulls and rooks. And they're eating our worms, which isn't very good. <clears throat> but when we get in the field next door, which will be fodder to be this year, hopefully they'll start eating leather jackets and stuff, which we don't want. So they can have a few worms, as long as they go next door and eat all the nasty bits as well. Um, we'll, uh, we'll put up with a meat and a few worms. We are sticking to the mole boards pretty bad. The soil is uh, it's quite wet. We've had a wet winter, as everybody knows. Um, it's, yesterday wasn't playing very well. I've had a little fiddle with some fiddle with some settings, and it's matching up better than it was. Um, but because it's sticking so bad. It's not ideal, but we're burying all the trash, which is which is what we need. All the slurry and the dung is going underneath, which is where it needs to be. And we are pulling up a few fodder beet that the lure and the driver on the beet harvester missed. So we'll have to have a word with him and um, try better next time. Um, we've got the drone. Hopefully, we're getting a few a few spits of rain. I thought the sun was going to come out a minute ago. But uh, as soon as we get a decent bit of sunshine, or decent 10 minutes of no rain, we'll do some drone. 
and that will probably be it for the video. We can't. I was hoping to get some headland filmed. Um, you know, plowing headland. That ain't going to happen today. But you know, we've got to save stuff for the future, so you never know. Might do a headland plowing video somewhere else, but it won't be in this video. So for those of you that are interested, um, we are chugging along at about, oh, is that about 14, about 14, 50 RPM, five kilometers an hour, and about 12 liters an hour of diesel, just for those of you that are interested. I, I haven't got it set up to tell me what acres an hour that is. Let me see, hold on, stay there, I will fiddle. Let's get some settings. Get our, get our area counter set and we will tell you. This is very exciting YouTube this is. Watching me pressing buttons. Right, so working width is... Well, let's do some calculations. So working width is 1.4 meters. Oh, hang on, that's the wrong button. That's the wrong button. Right, so we will knock that down. 1.4. And reset that. Right, here we go. So that equates to about 15 liters. 15 liters. 15 liters the hectare of uh, fuel. I don't know how that compares to other people. We are chugging along fairly slow because we haven't got a great deal to do. Well, I want to get everything buried and there's plenty of people go probably twice the speed of this. Um, they've probably got better soil conditions. But we're happy chugging along nice and gentle. With our sticky mold boards. In a minute I can tell you when we get the plow back in the ground it will tell me how many hectares an hour we're doing, which is not very many. Point seven. So there we go. Bit of a bit of a slow old job. So it would have been interesting to show you that setting up the uh, the acre meter on here, but I don't know for why. But the camera doesn't ever pick up these LCD screens. Doesn't matter in any track. You see it on all sorts of videos. The camera, the the screen is always kind of flickering. I assume it's something to do with the camera and frame. I don't know, but it just never shows up very well. So that's why I didn't show you because you can't see it. So I can tell you the figures, and uh, everybody can tell me how much better they do it than I do. But there we are.
right, so there we go. Hope you enjoyed that little video. Um, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. And give us a thumbs up and all that. And leave a comment as always. Um, I have got a little bit better just recently at replying to comments. Um, so I'm going to try and keep that going. Um, but you might have to wait a week until I get there. But, you know, we're trying. Anyway, so thank you very much for watching. And we'll see you next time.